So my name is Gonzalo Carazo Barbero, and I, together with my colleagues Eva Besada Portas, Jose Maria Giron Sierra, and Jose Antonio Lopez Orozco, uh, I'm going to present the based ASV trajectory planner for pollution detection in Atlantic waters. The motivation behind this project is uh, to be able to monitor pollutants that may appear in bodies of water, such as uh, reservoirs or lakes, that may be harmful for either consumption or the wildlife that lives in them. Uh, at the moment, uh, there are three techniques uh, being used mainly. The first one of the techniques is the um, early network uh, warning networks, which consist of stationary probes that can take measurements periodically, but they are not able to do so uh, just, uh, in other places of the lake, just where they are located. Um, the second technique that is being used is the manual monitoring, which uh, basically consists of uh, in sending someone in a boat in order to take samples. And this can be done anywhere in the lake or reservoir, but um, you can only do so uh, sporadically because it becomes costly otherwise. And finally, the alternative in which this paper uh, um, adds to is the dynamic autonomous monitoring um, through the use of ASVs, which are autonomous surface vehicles. And they basically consist on sending an autonomous boat anywhere in the lake and taking measurements as uh, often as it's needed. And it's uh, a lot cheaper than sending a, a someone to do so. In particular, this project uh, is divided in two phases. In the first one, we perform a physical simulation transport in order to know where the pollutants are and where they, they will be um, over time. And in the second phase, we have uh, performed, a, we implemented an offline ASV uh, path planning uh, using a, a genetic algorithm, which uh, whose objective is um, to uh, plan a path that is able to find as many particles as possible. And let's start with the first phase. Uh, the physical model consists of the fluid dynamics, which are laminar and steady state. And then from then we can derive the particle uh, transport model, which um, tell us how the particles move over time. All the simulations are done in, the, in a fictitious lake with one inlet and one outlet, in which the um, surface of the water is a sliding boundary and the lake bed is a non-sliding boundary. This is the mathematical model. Um, essentially, we have the fluid dynamics at the top and then which is a steady state, so only needs to be solved once. And that fits into the particle transfer um, model, which first calculates the velocity and then the position. The fluid dynamics um, consists of the Navier-Stokes equations for incompressible fluids, which is a very um, common set of, of equations used for fluids. And they are solved due to their, their complexity using uh, COMSOL, which is a multi-physics simulator software. This is the result that we obtain, uh, setting a laminar inflow of 100 meters cubed per second and a relative uh, outlet pressure of zero pascals. We can see in the colors the velocity of the water at the surface of the lake, and then the lines tell us how uh, the direction the water is moving. So we can infer that there's a, a fast current flowing from the inlet to the outlet, uh, which is shown in darker colors. And then um, there is a vortex in the middle of the lake that uh, is water that is moving slowly um, and in circles. From that, we can go on to the particle transport model. Um, so given the fluid dynamics and the uh, initial particle position, we can uh, find out their velocities essentially using a force balancing equation. And then from there, we can integrate the uh, velocity to get the position. Once we have the new positions, we uh, go back to the beginning and calculate the, the velocities for the new positions and keep going on like that until we can uh, calculate all the uh, times that we want to uh, use in the optimization later. So uh, we use two different particle uh, distributions. In particle distribution A, 
they are initialized near the edge of the lake. So they are uh, a lot faster and they spread a lot more and in thin lines. Whereas in particle distribution B, they are initialized near the center of the vortex. So they move slower and they don't spread almost. Moving on to the second phase of the project. Uh, it consists uh, in an optimization of a trajectory that is to be followed by a probe attached to an ASV, um, such that the trajectory captures efficiently as many particles as possible of those that we simulated before. Uh, the uh, horizontal coordinates are shared by the ASV and the probe, and then the probe is able to move up, up and down too. The trajectory is encoded using splines, and uh, although the problem itself is constrained multi-objective, we solved it using a mono-objective genetic algorithm. The encoding of the trajectory, as I said, was done by splines. Uh, these splines are three-dimensional uh, in space, and then it also has the dimension of time for each of the nodes. The nodes coordinates, which define the spline, are the decision variables. And since uh, some of the coordinates are fixed at the beginning and the first and the last point of the spline, there are in total 37 decision variables since we have 10 uh, different polynomials in the spline. Um, we wanted to have a curve that could be followed realistically by an ASV. So we wanted it to be continuous in position, velocity, and acceleration. Uh, obviously, uh, you define a, a spline by its nodes, so the position of the nodes um, are constrained either by the user or the algorithm. And we also wanted to fix the initial and final velocity and acceleration for safety reasons so that we can stop the boat at the beginning and the end of the mission. And the easiest way to do so all of this is to use the uh, third degree polynomials on the interior segments and then fourth degree on the beginning and the end. The optimization criteria um, is basically, um, it consists mainly of uh, one main objective and then two secondary objectives. The main objective is to uh, maximize the number of particles found in, in the entire trajectory. We consider that a particle is found if it enters at any point an ellipsoid that surrounds the probe. Um, this is chosen so that uh, we can test if the simulation is correct. So if we find the amount of particles that we were expecting, we know that the simulation is correct and then this is a valid um, solution for the ASV to take samples. If we don't find as many particles as we found, as we simulated, then um, we know that there is something wrong with the simulator and we can go back and try to fix it. Then uh, there are a couple of secondary object objectives, which uh, they are there in order to make the trajectory not go places it doesn't need to or waste time unnecessarily. The two uh, secondary objectives are to minimize the emission duration and to minimize the total trajectory length. So they try to make the trajectory as small as possible in time and in space. There are uh, four constraints. Uh, the first of them is the maximum mission duration, uh, which is set uh, by the user and could be uh, due to the limitations of the battery of the ASV, for example, or limitations that the user sets because of time frames given to, to the user. There are also uh, the maximum ASV velocity and acceleration, which is a limitation of the hardware, of the how fast can the boat move and accelerate. And we include also uh, spatial domain constraints, um, especially we want to keep the ASV away from the shores so that it doesn't get stuck uh, at any point. And we also limit how far the uh, trajectory can move in the Z axis, in the vertical axis, because the probe has a limited range in which it can travel. Uh, as I said, the problem is multi-objective, but the um, algorithm uses uh, mono-objective. So we combine all of the objectives, obviously having uh, the maximization objective uh, subtracting from the sum, and then 
and and we also include the constraints um, obviously making them zero if they are met and with this we create the objective function which we called ev and is shown here then uh, we optimize this function using a genetic algorithm uh, the initialization of the algorithm is uh, given by a uniform distribution within the allowed range the parent selection is proportional to the objective function and done through the roulette method. There is two point crossover. The mutation is local and uh, given by a uniform distribution. There are a few immigrants and the correct combination is an elitist substitution. So the best uh, solutions of the previous generation go on to the next one. Here in this table, we can see the uh, parameters that we used in this algorithm, uh, th those who are fixed that are fixed, but then we also um, change one of the parameters, in particular the weight of the second objective. Um, and we created three planner configurations, V1, V2, and V3. In all of the cases, the um, weight of the uh, main objective, which is the particle count, is the greatest, but then we change the ratio between the uh, first and the, the trajectory length and the mission duration objectives in order to check which one uh, of the versions perform better for each of the scenarios. Um, we uh, set up two, mission, two different mission profiles. In the first one, the mission is performed early on the simulation time, so the particles are still uh, concentrated together. And the, it begins and ends at the same point in, near the bottom of the map. In the second mission profile, the mission is done later in time and also the starting and ending point they are different in this case so it starts at the top of the map and then has to go through the lake in order to reach the bottom of the map which is the end point we can combine the mission profiles with the particle distributions in order to get the four scenarios that we use which are shown here in their respective uh, time frames and we can see how the particle distribution B, as we said before, it doesn't spread as much, whereas the particle distribution A, it forms lines, but depending on how, when the mission is performed, the lines can change. Um, so uh, in order to get some results and a uh, feel of how uh, efficient this algorithm is in solving the problem at hand, we performed uh, a statistical analysis uh, based on 25 executions of its scenario and configuration. Um, the results are represented using this graph on, on the right. The top three, three plots, they represent the mean and the standard deviation of the executions for each of the objectives. And the top one is the main objective, which is the particle count and is subject to maximization. And the other ones, um, the, which are the uh, trajectory length and the mission duration, uh, respectively, they are subject to minimization under the secondary objectives. Then in the bottom of the picture, uh, we show uh, a plot in red and, and green, which uh, represent the number of executions in which the constraints are met. So whenever it's shown in green, all the executions have reached at least one solution that in which the constraints are met. And so we, using the same structure, we can show the results for each of the uh, scenarios. And we find that um, the configuration V2, which is the one in, with the uh, weight uh, in the middle, is the fastest for the particle distribution A in which the lines are formed. But V1 is fastest for particle distribution V, so meaning they reach a um, um, a viable solution earlier. Then uh, regarding the objectives, V1 and V2 are the best for the main objective, um, depending exactly which one depends on the on the scenario, but they are either one or the other. Whereas uh, V3 is the best for trajectory length, with the, which is to be expected because in that's the configuration in which the weight for the trajectory length is highest. So it is prioritized over the others. Um, however, there is no clear best for the um, best configuration for the mission duration. Here we can see uh, some examples using configuration V3. We see that uh, in some cases more than others, 
the line traced by the particles is followed by the trajectory uh, that we optimized. It, this is uh, usually better in configure in this particle distribution A, um, because particle distribution B is all too clamped uh, so, uh, together, so it doesn't uh, follow sometimes. Uh, but in all of the cases, the vertical distribution of the particles, which is shown in the still images, uh, is all over the place, so there is no clear uh, path to be followed by the trajectory. This is due to the kind of contaminant that is being modeled, which is neutrally buoyant, and this may change if the contaminant being modeled uh, changes. As a conclusion, I'd like to uh, sum up what we have done. So. The, uh, first, we performed a modeling and simulation of the contaminant particle transport, uh, which includes uh, fluid dynamics, which are laminar and steady state, and uh, possible, passive uh, particle transport for neutrally buoyant particles with any additional forces added to them besides the fluid dynamics. And then uh, using that, we performed an optimization on, on a trajectory that represents the trajectory of an, uh, of an ASB in order to uh, efficiently find as many particles as possible of those simulated. The encoding was used, uh, uh, was a spline. Then the optimization of the trajectory consists of three objectives and four restrictions. It was tested in four different scenarios, uh, given by two particle distributions times two uh, mission profiles. And finally, uh, three planner configurations were uh, tested in order to see which parameters work best in each of the cases. This is a preliminary work, um, so there's a lot to be done in the future. Uh, for instance, we would like to add dynamic and turbulent fluid flows, uh, because now it is uh, laminar and steady state. We have started working on some of the things, uh, such as particularizing the contaminant behavior. In particular, we have been developing a model for um, cyanobacteria uh, blooms, which is a kind of algae that may be toxic. Uh, in the process, we have added some other physical phenomena such as light transmission in the water, but we would also like to add heat transport and wind and some others. Uh, it would be good to have a statistical transport model uh, using Monte Carlo simulation, so that it's not uh, that deterministic. And uh, we would like to test it experimentally when the simulator is uh, done. Uh, finally, in the optimization phase of the project, um, we would like to test some different trajectory encodings. Uh, we have started working using um, other optimization algorithms, in particular constrained multi-objective algorithms such as NSGA2. Uh, we have a prototype for an initialization step in order to get better trajectories in which you start this plan with uh, fewer nodes that you need and then you add nodes progressively as uh, the optimization goes on until you reach the desired amount of, of nodes. And this makes the simulation process, the optimization process faster, and the solutions that we get are better from the beginning instead of having to wait that much in order to get uh, good solutions. Uh, finally, we would like to also uh, implement a two-phase optimization, first in the horizontal plane and then in the vertical direction, because there, uh, uh, the sizes of these the axes is, uh, they are uh, very different. The uh, horizontal plane is a lot bigger than the vertical direction, di direction that, the, that the probe can follow, uh, travel. And finally, we would like to perform a systematic study of all the planner parameters in order to find out which one are best in each of the cases. And this will be all. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you, Gonzalo. Uh, uh, very good presentation uh, and a very good uh, paper indeed. Um, so uh, it's time for, for questions. If uh, you have an, any question, please ask them in the in the chat or, or open your microphone and, and ask directly to, to Gonzalo your, your question, please. Yes, I have one. Uh, uh, Gonzalo, thank, thank you for the presentation. It was really interesting. Um, I have a question regarding the constraints. Uh, 
How mm -hmm. hard are the constraints? I mean, when you get a solution that uh, is not meeting the, the constraints, can you repair it uh, or not? Yep. Um, so we do not repair it, we leave it as it is. Um, but uh, since the, the the way the the objective function is uh, set up, the farther it is being correct, the worse the objective function is. So it uh, goes towards the uh, allowed values. Okay. Thank you. So that's why at the beginning of the of the of the executions here in the in the uh, the beginning is red because not there is no um, uh, solution that meets the constraints until generation uh, well, later on when it becomes green. Uh, okay, I understood this that at the number of uh, uh, of uh, solution that uh, is uh, are meeting the from the total execution okay and now i understand yeah. okay. mm -hmm. so, but I, I i think that if you implement the multi-objective approach it could be much better because uh, the the sum of uh, products you probably is is, is uh, um is bad for the algorithm i mean but very interesting yes so talk thank you yeah, we, we have kept working on it, and now we have uh, NH, uh, NGA2 implemented, NH, 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 NSGA2, yeah. Okay, thank you. It works Congrats. a little better. Thank you. Okay, another question? I, I would like to, to ask you, Gonzalo, mm -hmm. about the possibility of using real data in, instead of uh, using a simulator, is possible nowadays? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it, it hasn't been implemented, but it wouldn't be um, difficult. The difficulty lies in uh, getting the real data most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, usually you can get some data, but uh, at the end of the day, it's just going to be um, a still snapshot. So you would like you, you, that. That's the objective of the simulator: is that given one snapshot, you can simulate how it's going to move in the future. Um, uh, because there is no. So th this is part of the objective of the problem that we, you can keep monitoring the, how the pollutant move uh, in time. Because right now you only have early net, uh, uh, warning networks, which tell you the concentration of the pollutants at certain points of the lake, but not all of them. And you can't keep imaging the the lake constantly for uh, in order to get uh, image data from the sky, for example, or satellites or whatever. Yeah, yeah I understand. It, it makes sense. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm fine. But given, I mean, given uh, if if that data existed, it wouldn't be hard to implement. In order, to, so you would just need to substitute. Uh, the particles that we simulated with the real data and the optimization would work the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.